announcements for August the 14th. First, before I do the announcement, I want to say Mother Roxas is here. There's no reason no one else So I say, Mother Roxas, you want to do announcements today? today? She said, nope, you do it. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I will. And I am. Yes. Okay, five-star leadership class, 8 a.m. on campus. New member orientation class, 9.15 to 9.45 a.m. All uh, Sunday school classes, 9 a.m. Except Mother's virtual Sunday school classes at 2 p.m. Sunday morning virtual service starts at 10 a.m. Check your bulletin in the New Baptist Church website for updated weekly activities for August 15th through the 21st. To our New Baptist family, we the Williams Colmans would like to express our thanks and gratitude and continue prayers in the sudden loss of my wife's nephew and the loss of my mother. We also like to thank the praise team and usher board and all the ministries for all you did in helping us out with the home form services. And thank you for all the cards, telephone calls, plants and flowers, and monetary donations. You will always be in our thoughts and prayers. Sincerely, the white and Marjorie, Anthony, and Eunice. Amen. New Bethlehem Church family will celebrate our First Lady Norris. First Lady Norris. Our pastor and First Lady Norris. guys to please dress up. No jeans, no t-shirts. This is a dress up occasion, okay? And it will be at the Regency Hotel, 400 Regency Park, Fountain, Illinois. Children 3 and under free, children 4 to 12, $15. Anyone 13 up and 30, $35 per person. All payments are due today. Today. You can see me or Minister Dabs right after service. And the celebration will conclude on Sunday, August the 21st, during our 10 a.m. worship service. Our special guest speaker will be Reverend Carlos Kelly, <laughs> pastor of Union Man Bible Church in Macon, Georgia. And on Sunday, we ask you guys to wear raw blue, silver, and white for Sunday. Everyone is invited to show our love and appreciation and support our first family. Love, offers and welcome. You can put it in your ties on the one that passes anniversary. Thank you, church family, for your cooperation. Upcoming event, Women Breakout 2022. Yeah. October 7th and 8th, by Jordan Senior Center, 6755 Station, East St. Louis, Illinois. To register, go to the Baptist Facebook page. The exciting conference will include many guest speakers, worship leaders, conference t shirt Souvenir booklet, lunch, vendor fair, and fashion show at the low cost of $35. This is going to be a conversation that you don't want to miss. Invite family and friends. Yeah. Volunteers are needed for children and youth ministry. Contact Deacon Tyrone Smith. Full pantry contact Deacon Amos. Kingdom Middle Sports and Recreation Ministry needs volunteers. The ministry is also asking for donations of any hand weights, resistance bands, yoga mats, or other exercise equipment that you are no longer using. Container for your donation is located in the vestibule against the wall next to the bench. Thank you for in advance. Don't forget to log in miles from 250 walking for a healthier heart club. The gym will be available Monday, Friday, 6.30 to 8 p.m. And on Wednesday, 5.30 to 15 p.m. Contact Sister Javetta Carter, Charlotte Hood, or Elizabeth Twenty for additional information. Call in prayer every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 6 a.m. Call in line 605-313-4441, access code 630854, and please mute your line. To report any member who is sick in the hospital or report any deaths, you may call the church office Monday, Thursday, Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can also get a prayer request card from an usher. Everyone is asked to continue supporting all in building fund and media ministry. Don't forget, including your prayers, our members, relatives, friends, those in bereavement, service men and women, our leaders in our churches and our country. Now for today, from God's true providing seed for the Spirit. The Lord can be trusted, even when he can't be trapped. Oh, yeah. Isaiah 55a, for the thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways or my ways, said the Lord. Y'all have a good day. Good morning, church. Good morning. Before we head out today, before I'm praising, because
back. I want all of our children, teenagers, and college students that'll be going to school in the next couple of weeks to come on down to the altar. Our deacons behind them, amen. Amen. We're just playing softly, some type of worship music. And I'd like the ministers in front of them, please. Let's quickly come on down. Amen. Just need some oil as well. We give the Lord praise for this new school year. Can we give God praise for this new school year? Lord, it's God, you're going to college and this is your first year. We want you to come down as well and we want to anoint you with oil. We believe that oil covers you and protects you. And yes, you do know what's going on, but we just believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We believe in covering you for the next year. There are diseases. There is violence. There is false teachers. There are all types of identity crises that you are facing that you need prayer for. So every year we do this, but I don't want you to think we just do it to be on television. We believe that in the power of prayer that God will cover you by his blood. Do I have a witness from anybody? You are surrounded around a great cloud of witnesses. We trust and believe that God's word will cover you. And we pray for those of our audience that you would, you don't have to completely stretch your arms because you get a little tired. You can allocate your arms this way towards these teenagers, children, college students, every eye closed, every head bowed. I would ask the students at the altar that you would lift your hands in an act of surrender. Ministers, that you would go around and lay your hands on their shoulder and the head. Deacons, you're praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we cover every student in your name. We thank you for your blood that shall cover them in this new school year. As they are going to college dorms, as they're going to new schools, God, and new situations, Father, we need you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke and bind the spirit of bullying. We rebuke and bind the spirit of teachers speaking low expectations. We thank you that your plan and your purpose for their lives shall be manifested. We pray for their teachers, God, that they will see the anointing on each of their lives. We bind, we rebuke and bind labels of learning disabilities. We rebuke and bind labels of behavior disorders. We rebuke and bind every negative word from a principal, a counselor. But we speak life into our students in the name of Jesus. We speak the anointing of God. We speak the light and the power of the Holy Ghost. Satan, the Lord rebuke you now. Your hand is like no longer on them, but the blood of Jesus covers them in their dorms, in their second period, in their gym class, in the locker room. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus shed on Calvary's hill. Satan, take your hand off of each one of their minds. We bind, we bind even the negative talk from their friends. But the anointing of the Lord be upon them like never before. Father, anoint this school here. Anoint athletics. Anoint their activities. Anoint God the after school program. Anoint the math teacher, the speech teacher. God, anoint the lunchroom counter. Bless them all in the name of Jesus. Anoint, anoint, anoint. And let them be a light set on the hill that cannot be hidden. In the name of Jesus. It is so much joy to share by my mind. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Fill them. This school year. Thank you for 4.0 GPAs. Thank you for honor roll. Thank you for deeds list. Thank you. Thank you for scholarships. God, thank you for miraculous money coming from the north, south, east, and the west. Thank you. God, we thank you. This four year belongs to you. We thank you that God, you won't just bless us for the Christmas break, but we're dedicated 2023 to you now. Father, thank you for the summer break. But Father, help them get plenty of rest at night. We pray for the children that God don't have the homes. God, we pray for the children that don't have people praying for them. Let one of these students be an evangelist. Pray for their friends. And we thank you. And we glorify you. In the name of Jesus. It is so. And so it is. Will you clap your hands and love the Lord? People, Smith, Mr. Charles, we're going to go here and release the children's church, the teen church. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands for them. Come on. Back in the hands of our praise team.
people. He said, begin to make a declaration. He said, tell the people, it's time for us to renew our vows. Thank you, Lord, for a 
a church that loves you. Thank you for a church that magnifies you. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless the worship. Let it glorify you. Our hearts are open to receive. Touch us again. Touch us with the Holy Ghost. Fill our mouth with your praise. Fill our hearts with your love. I need somebody praying with me. waiting on you. Father, we bind the witch, we bind the woman, we bind everything that comes against this word. But we thank you that it's going to be planted into good ground. We're going to see the fruit. We're going to see the change. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you love God and you believe it, clap your hands and give it glory. I say clap your hands and give it glory.
They follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it up on the wood and put no fire under. We need to look at somebody, oh, verse 24, I'm sorry, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answered in fire, let him be God. And all the people did have an answer. All the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Well, you just look at somebody and say, neighbor, recess is over. Come on, tell somebody else and say, neighbor, recess is over. Now give the Lord praise as you sit down in his presence. There are many definitions for the word recess. In court proceedings, it means break. It means a stoppage in what we're doing to do something else. Recess can also mean a temporary constraint of something that you're doing. In this term, I mean recess in what our children do. Children take away from their lesson and they go outside or they do some extracurricular activities on the jumping gym, uh, on the track, on the swings. They do something and it is playtime. It's playtime. It is time for them to disengage from the rigors of study and to have some fun time. I believe that God gave us a break. He allowed us to really see who he was during a pandemic. It allowed us to really look at how we do ministry, really look at our life, really look at our health. When you had a precondition, you really watched who you were around because of what was going on. And I'm here to announce that two and a half years later, we still have some people on recess. Not because of a pandemic, not because of fear, but because we have developed some habits. I'm here to boldly confess, regardless of how you feel, is that recess is over. Playtime is over. It's time to get back to work. Because Jesus is on his way back. Now, I miss some of y'all because y'all don't really think Jesus is on his way back because you've been hearing that since you was a little child. Some of you are in your 70s and 80s and 90s, if you will, and it looks like that saying goes unnoticed because I've been hearing my whole life, Jesus is on his way back. But I'm here to announce to you that he is, in fact, on his way back, and he's coming for a church to present himself a church without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. I got to quote that right because Deacon Jackson, he's not coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle because what that would mean is we were already perfect before he came back. The Bible says he shall present himself a church without a spot or wrinkle. What he says is that when I come back, my blood will cover you. And as a bridegroom that comes to get his bride, Jesus is on his way back to get his church. Not the church name on the building, but those who have been blood bought by the Lord Jesus that now I as Christians roll call. Any Christians in here, if you're a Christian, wave your hand. If you know that you know that you've been bought by the blood, lift your hand and say, I'm a part of the church. My name is not just on the wall, but my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If I die today, you ain't got to worry about where I'm going. I'm going to go. Recess is over. Last week, I encouraged you that these three things, number one, his kingdom should be our top priority. His kingdom, his kingdom, his rule should be our top priority. Number two, I told you that the word kingdom means basilia. In the King James or the Greek, when Jesus said, thy kingdom come, basilia, Greek word, that meant he should now have dominion or the right or the authority to rule over something. Somebody say, thy kingdom. It is not my agenda. It is not your agenda. It is not the Baptist doctrine. It is not how you were raised. It was his kingdom. It was his kingdom that gave us the Baptist doctrine.
doctrine. It was his kingdom that gave you your agenda. It was his kingdom that gave you his call. Everything starts and stops with his basilia. It starts and stops with his kingdom. Somebody say thy kingdom. His kingdom and his familia, his will be done. His will is that one wishes to happen. In other words, we want his rule and what he wants. You can't say amen because we want his rule, but we want what we want. Let me say, if you can, thy kingdom come, thy will, what one wishes to happen are determined to happen. God, you are God. It is your, it is your basilia and it is your familia. It is your rule and it is what you want to do. So God, any way you want to bless me, y'all ain't talking, I'll be sad. Anything you want to do in this church, God, you do it because it is your basilia. It is your familia. Your kingdom come. Your will in my home, your basilia. In my mind, your basilia. In my home and in my child, your basilia. And when I'm raising my children, your familia, your will be done. Somebody say your will be done. I encourage you because as a church, and as God is blessing you financially in the year of the outpour, as God is giving you promotion, as God is giving you influence in the community, you can sometimes become drunk with your own basilia. You're using all these words, these seven dollar words that simply mean God's rule and God's will. Yeah. Right. In other words, you can build your own kingdom in the church. Oh, Don't nothing happen unless I make it happen. Oh, but no, we want his kingdom. Right. And when you constantly play around with God, you are constantly playing in reason. And can I tell you that in the fifth grade, one of the worst things I heard when I was coming up as a child was the whistle from the teacher to let me know that recess was over. And recess always seemed shorter than schoolwork. You know, you'd be in school seven hours. Recess was two minutes, y'all ain't said a word to me. And no way it rained. If it rained, you had to do recess in the class. Can't go to the gym. Can't go to the cafeteria. Recess is over. And when that bell or when that whistle would blow, blow, you would know it was time to come back in. And it's like some of you all, don't raise your hand because I don't want nobody to judge you. I'm going to judge me. I would always linger and get to the line. And I would always say to the teacher, just one more swing. Come on, just one more shot. Come on, just one more run around and trap. I ain't never said that. But just one more. Because I was enjoying what I was in. And I knew what was coming. And I liked the enjoyment over what I knew was coming. That's why we say to God, God, I, I, if you get me out of this one, I won't do it again. And God knows that you're probably going to end up in the same place. That's why he sent his son and gave you grace. Because he knows every now and then. We hate the sound of the whistle. But let us know, playtime is over. And God is calling you to a higher level of relationship. That God is calling you, like I told the leadership class this morning, to deeper spiritual development. That spiritual development is personal and it's now corporate. That I'm relying on you to have your personal devotion time with God so that when you come corporately, your prayer meets my prayer and there's a collision. There's a praise collision because you believe in God and I know God and when you believe, get to my knowing, I see who he is and then before you know it, the sinner's getting saved because personally, we have been searching God, but corporately, we have been praising God. But we got people still playing. Was the case with Israel. First and second kings, when you read in Sunday school students, it is dedicated to now the monarch of the kings of Israel. You'll only find in first and second kings the historical perspective of the kings of Israel. It is not until first and second chronicles that you find the historical accuracy of the monarch of the kings of Judah and Israel. You do remember the king Saul, whom God did not put his hand on, but the people asked for. And now they had Saul and David, and they were a united kingdom. But after David died, they split off, and ten tribes went to Israel, and two went to Judah. What we find 
behind and that the kings of Israel were more evil than the kings of Judah. In other words, they led the people of God through many forms of false worship. And here's the problem that God had with the kings of Israel. It wasn't that they were sinning, per se. He does hate sin. But what these kings were doing, not only were they sinning privately, but they were publicly telling everybody else they could sin. Y'all miss your place to shout. It's one thing for you to struggle by yourself, but it's another thing for you to get on your social media page and talk about you can still do this. Thank you for the one clap I got, hallelujah. Because if you struggle, that's between you and God and your prayer circle and your small group and your accountability. The problem with this, what your first lady loves to call this new sexy gospel, what everybody's trying to do is everybody's trying to get everybody to make them feel good. But I'm here to tell you that if we don't repent and if we don't get it right, God is not pleased. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You got preachers online celebrating Pride Month. You got preachers online telling you you can do A, B, and C. And what I'm telling you is that you're not, I'm not talking about the person, I'm talking about the sin. And what the kings of Israel were doing, they were struggling privately, but publicly telling people, you can serve God and whoever else you want to be. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's only one way to God. His name, y'all ain't celebrating. His name is Jesus. El Shaddai, Jesus. Mary's baby. We got 
you know, what they talking about. You can take me off. You can bring up my dirty. No matter. Jesus is still the only way. And I bet not am going to bet and let you know that if it had not been for him who was on my side, I feel like preaching. Scream at somebody and say, I know he's all right. Y'all sit down. Y'all scare him. The guest this fish bite. Elijah comes on the scene. He's preaching the kingdom of God. He's telling you that God's kingdom, his, his basilia, is what we need. And can I help you out today that the words you should have used this week, if you got into a jam, is thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Well, my situation ain't working out. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. See, you gotta know there's certain things that you can do and people know what you mean without you saying anything. Matter of fact, if I just got down from the pulpit and start running, everybody culturally would know not to ask no questions until we get to a safe spot. Because we understand that running is associated with danger. Well, the devil knows that when you say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, you ain't talking about your kingdom. He knows you're talking about God. And can I tell you that your situation will change when you eat Sir God. Let me put some Bible on it. He inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know about you, but whatever you're going to do, you to open your mouth and say, I need to be done. I need to be done. It's this body. He don't hate you. He says, okay, I'm going to come to y'all. Ain't no water coming. It ain't going to rain. It ain't going to rain. Matter of fact, it ain't going to rain for three and a half years. But can I tell you that when God gave him that word, he sent him to somebody who was affected by that word. Okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. Here it is. We are in a recession. There's inflation. So God's judgment against the nation affects the people in the nation. Go to your Bible. There was a widow who had no food who was affected by the trap that Elijah had pronounced. But God sent the prophet to that woman in the trap to let her know that God will protect you. Can I tell everybody at New Bethlehem who prays him that even though your country is in a recession, you serve a God that is recession proof. He'll make sure that you're living with us. He'll make sure you can
time. So Elijah keep doing what Elijah been told to do. He keep preaching. I don't care how many times my kids say I'm long winded. I'm going to keep preaching. I don't care how long people say I don't want to hear that. I'm going to just keep preaching. Tell somebody I don't care how long they keep mad at me. I'm going to just keep. God said he's going to bless you. I'm preaching. God said he's going to make a way. I'm preaching. God said he's going to open a door. I'm preaching. God said he's going to deliver you. Just keep preaching. Tell somebody just keep on. Y'all still here? Yeah. After three years, that Elijah goes down and he begins to walk amongst Israel. And, and there was a man in Ahab's tent. His name was Obadiah. Now, Obadiah is not to be mistaken with the minor prophet, but this Obadiah was a servant to Ahab. I need some Bible readers in here. And the scriptures are clear, Keisha. The scriptures say about him, Minister Charlie, that Obadiah feared the Lord. So he was in a bad situation, but he still trusted God. That's why I want to tell everybody, if you're married to somebody who's not saved, even though you're in a bad situation, you keep trusting God. Yeah, y'all get your place to shout. I didn't say you're living with somebody. I said if you're married to somebody. If you're living with someone, but the best thing to do is to go ahead and release that situation and you continue to stay committed to God. I'm being pastoral there, not being funny, because in this season that we are in, you have so many false religions telling you that a marriage certificate is only a piece of paper. But I want to tell you something, that when you stand before God and you take those vows, God or God or shall say it, we need to recommit our vows to God. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you might be in a bad situation. Bible's clear. Obadiah feared him. Go back and read it. He fears him. And here's what Ahab says. Ahab says him thinking the gust. He says, this is what we're going to do, Obadiah. I'm going to go one way. You go another way. And we're going to try to find if there's some water somewhere. Because the livestock that we have is getting ready to die. And if we don't find the water soon, we're going to have to kill them. Can I tell you, I love a good steak sandwich. But steak savers don't taste good without something to drink. You ever had a Popeye's biscuit with no fruit punch or strawberry soda? It get caught on the top of your mouth. Are you be caught dirt? Ahab said, I don't want to go through that. So you go one way, I'm going to go another way. Ahab goes his way and Obadiah goes his way and Obadiah meets with the Lord as God. He meets this Elijah and Elijah says to him, go get your master. Obadiah said, wait a minute. Now, now wait a second, Elijah. Now here's the word that you don't know what's going on for these three last three years. Ahab told us, and I'm paraphrasing, tribalizing it. Ahab, Ahab told us that if anybody finds you, they need to call him immediately so they can kill you. So you want me to go back and tell him that I found Elijah, and you want me to tell him that I found him, and then when I go back, I know how you get down, Elijah, you're going to disappear and be like, I'm crazy. And so now that I went back to Ahab and told him that I saw you, and now you disappeared, they're going to be mad at me. Obadiah is scared. Kind of like Ananias was when he was anointing Saul. You remember Acts chapter 9, he said, isn't it the same man that was breathing pregnancies out to the church? Obadiah says, Elijah, I love you, I respect you, but I ain't the one. Elijah says to him, Obadiah, don't you worry, as the Lord God liveth, I'll be right here. Tell your master, watch this, tell your master to come to me. Obadiah does what uh, uh, Elijah asked him to do. He goes back in Ahab. Ahab sees Elijah far off and hears what the words of the government to a preacher. Here is the words of the Republicans to preachers. Here is the word to Democrats to preachers. Here is the word from independents to preachers. Here's what Ahab says to the prophet. He says, is that the troublemaker? I'm in the book. Is not this the troublemaker? And Elijah flips it on him. Elijah said, I ain't the one that cause all the trouble. It's been you because all God wants you to do is repent. All God been wanting you to do is get it together. All God been asking you to do is quit this bell worship. 
and repenting. There are people, listen to me, there are people who believe that the lifestyle they are living is okay. This is not biblical. They can't find no Bible on it. And they will try to confuse you because what most people do, they'll go to cemetery, I mean seminary, they'll go to seminary. I mean cemetery the first time. They go to seminary and they learn things and they use big words in the wrong context. And then what you do is you get confused and you're like, huh? Okay, maybe don't say that. But God's word is true. Is anything wrong with seminary? Absolutely not. Your pastor's seminary trained, but I understand the Holy Ghost and how he moves through the pages of this Bible. <laughs> Repentance is not I'm sorry. I'm sorry really indicates that you are sorry you got caught. <laughs> Repentance says, I sinned against God. And therefore, I am due retribution, which is death. But because I repent, God will deliver me. Anybody in here ever needed just to repent? Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my shortcomings. Forgive me for making that mistake again. Lord, forgive me. And here's what I love about God. When you say that, he say, come on, baby. Come on to the church of Lord. Because I won't hold your sin against you. I throw your sin Proceeds deliverance. There's still a drop. Ahab has not come to grips that he needs to repent. Because Ahab says, I got a good job. I just bought the new Jordans. Got a nice car. Got a house. I mean, do I really need to be all spiritual? Do I really need God? It seems like God needs me more than I need him. We don't say that, but we play recess like that. That, that. that if for some reason you're not here, the Holy Ghost will move. Like the Holy Ghost will only come when you come. Thank you for those four claps. If I don't show up today, I have nothing. I'll tell you, I, when we, the Lord taught us years ago when we first started pastoring, that he can do whatever he want to do when he can do it. We didn't have a musician. We, we weren't blessed to have a band like we got now. And so first lady would sing the tracks. She would sing to a track. And so that means she had to practice so she would know when the track was going to cut off. And then she would sing and then I would preach to no tracks. Because there was no hoop trigger. I would just hoop to the sky. And what God was showing us is that regardless of who shows up, are you here for me or the crowd? This is the last time I ever say that I proved my point. And we proved our point that it doesn't matter if they shut us down or they tell us to go home. God's word will still be free. And Elijah preaches to them in such a way that he's saying, stop playing with God. He says, he says, stop hiding behind doctrine. Hide behind what you think. And forgive. And love people. And hold them accountable. And when, when I was coming up in the church, we didn't do that. Well, when you came up, it was 1987. It's 2022. The gospel is still true. But we're dealing with a different animal. And so that gospel that we had, when I was growing up, it wasn't none of this stuff. When I was coming up to church, you went to church, you came home. But that's not the life we live in. Amen. So what do we do? What do we do? We do what Elijah does. We keep preaching repentance. But we don't become dogmatic and judgmental when people don't do what we want them to do. So dogmatic. Elijah's not dogmatic. Elijah really is taking them back to what they said they believed. See, he didn't bring nothing new. He just said, okay, you told me you was raised in the church. You, 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 you told me you went to vacation Bible school. 
you brag about how your parents always had you in church. But I'm looking at your lifestyle and look like you ain't never been to church. Okay, y'all clap for the people outside. Let me go come on inside. You show up every week. But then something doesn't go your way. And then we figure out like God is saying, Elijah's saying, we got to repent. And stop sitting in the church on our phones. Stop sitting in the church with our arms crossed. Talking about, well, no. And you've been 
you're ready to go, but you have to use the restroom, and there's that one employee that got a thousand questions. Last week's meeting, you said, oh, oh that's a good question. We ready to go. I got to go pick my daughter up from daycare. I've already been late 10 times. What you talking about? This was different. They didn't ask anything. You know why? Because they didn't really believe in what Elijah was preaching. They needed a visible sign. Look at this next point I want to give you. I wish I hope that you get something out of it. Here's my question to the church. Are you with God or not? I, I just need to know. I need to know, do you love God or not? And if you love God, you can love people through their sin, but you don't have to agree with their sin. I can love you through it, because I've been right where you are. I might not have done what you've done, but I've been right where you are. But I will not excuse, I will not okay, and I will not praise your sin. See, you know what a DM really is used for, direct messaging? You know what DMs are really used for? It's really for private accountability. Because see, what we've done is we've perverted it. Now DMs are for sexual hookups. See, DMs, all the older saints ain't got no DMs for the young folk, right? <laughs> if you older, you know what DMs are. I'm just old. That's what these middle-aged saints. Mothers, y'all, deacons, y'all just pray for the young folk. 40 and below, know what DMs are. They look, that's why they, that's why they get real squirmy, mothers. Y'all pray for them. I don't want to pass the S and come on your road. It's really private accountability. Because if I see you posting something, I have an avenue directly to you, direct messaging, to tell you, take that off your page. But see, what some people do is they use the scripture out of context. Over rebuke is better than secret love. Put it in context. You can't over rebuke me if we don't have no relationship. And over rebuke is not to be embarrassed. That scripture is meant for people who are preaching false doctrine. You can't just use the Bible how you want to use it. So I can direct the message and say, listen, what, what you got on your page? Take that down. See, secret accountability. I mean, private accountability. And now if you don't listen, if you don't listen, when I see you at church, whenever I see you, we're going to have a conversation. Hey, man, you a believer, you a leader of the church, you, you working in ministry, why, why you got that on your page? Now, probably if they're mature, they're like, you're right. If they're immature, the conversation is going to probably go something like this. Ready? Here it is. You should have that on your page. Who are you talking to? You got skeletons too. Boom, right there. Right there. The recess is over. I should be able to come to you as a believer privately and do what my daughter says, bring it to the side and say, guess what? You should have that on your page. You should be living like that. And I'm not here to judge you, but I know you mad. But before we go, can we both pray? Then you find out what the devil is. I don't want no prayer for you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebukes you. See, we should be able to hold each other accountable so that we can all grow thereby. The moment nobody in this church can tell you anything, you cease from growing and you cross over into disobedience and a hardened heart. Elijah says, y'all playing. He says, he says, y'all playing so much that here's what I want y'all to do. Okay, those 450 people that are okay in your sin, the 450 people that say it's okay to worship Baal, the 450 people that keep telling you that you can be a part of the LGBT community without repenting and go to heaven, those false prophets that they're telling you that you can do that, listen to me, you go get them 450, and I want you to do the same thing for those 450 that you're going to do for the church. Here's what I want y'all to do. Go get two bullocks before, because y'all going to kill them anyway, because they ain't going to lie coming until y'all repent. So here it is. Go kill two bullocks, cut them into pieces, and I want you to lay those bullocks on the altar. And I don't want you to put no fire to them. And here's what we're going to do. They're going to call their God, and I'm going to call the real God, the true and living God. And so here's what happened. They put those pieces on the altar. And those bell prophets, those false prophets, begin to call on their God. And the scriptures tell us that they begin to scream and cut themselves. And Elijah, real petty, y'all pray for Elijah. Elijah, 
got petty. He said, scream a little louder. Make your gods asleep. Oh, petty Elijah. Y'all pray for Elijah. He said, call him a little louder. Maybe he can't hear y'all. And they begin to cut themselves and nothing happened. Elijah said, see what I told you. When you trust in horses and when you trust in chariots, nothing will happen. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. Is it easy to light? Can it be lit? Will the fire get? It got to dry first. Elijah said, Elijah said, uh, uh, put water on my wood. And, and I'm going to call on Jehovah. You remember Uriah, Uriah, the man that David killed. His name in the Hebrew means Jehovah's fire. That, Je that, that the Jehovah, the God of fire, was a fire by night that led Israel out of Egypt, and he was a cloud by day. It is the same God that shall now destroy the earth with fire this last time he comes. He says, I'm going to call the God, my God, who's not only God of one thing, but he's God of all things, and I'm going to call on my God, and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. Needless to say, that when the bell
God, if you miss your time, you miss your deliverance, today he's in the building to do whatever you desire, whatever you have need of, God is here to do it today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. I feel deliverance in the building. Glory to God. Glory to God. You shouldn't want to leave here the same way you came. If you came in here heavy, leave light. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he's in the building. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. Glory to God. There's freedom in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let me, let, let me do my assignment on this morning. Glory to God. I'm all excited. That, that's an awesome, powerful word. Recess is over. Hallelujah. Recess is over. Hallelujah. I'm all, all in between two opinions. Glory to God. James says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Choose today to serve God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So first of all, we offer you this morning salvation. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. If you're online, type it in the chat box that I want to give my life to Christ. Hallelujah. Salvation, first of all. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that, but as many have received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Glory to God. Salvation. If you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, glory to God. That means you accept the substitutionary atonement of Jesus Christ as your sin bearer. Glory to God. You've never done that. This is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. Tomorrow is not promised to nobody. Glory to God. This is your opportunity. They're checking out of here old, young, in middle age, it don't make no difference. Glory to God. When it's time for you to leave, it's time to go. But you got to be ready. That's the main thing. Be ready. Glory to God. So if you don't know Jesus in the part that you're seeing, this is your opportunity to surrender. I've been hearing that word all through the service today. Surrender. Re renew our vows. Sister got up and said, renew. It's time to renew our vow to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if you don't know the Lord today, come to walk down the aisles. Look like the person beside you and ask him to walk, him to walk down with you. Glory to God. Salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation. That's the most important thing. That's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is to surrender your life to Christ. Hallelujah. The most important decision you will ever make is to give your life to Christ. Salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Glory to God. With the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. Salvation. Hallelujah. He's tugging at your heart right now. He brought you here to this morning. Glory to God to bring you to him. No one can come unless they be drawn by the Spirit of God. If you drew you here this morning for the purpose of saving your soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There be none for salvation. Second of all, we offer rededication. If you've ever had a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you've ever been saved, and you've drifted away from the things of God, drifted away from the presence of God and from His Word, this is your opportunity right now to rededicate your life to Christ. Glory to God. If you're in the small mind, type it in the chat box, then I want to rededicate my life to Christ. Anybody in the sanctuary who wants to rededicate their life to Christ, glory to God. This is your opportunity to renew your vows with the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that he's married to the next God. Glory to God. He's knocking at the door of your heart. 
said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man asks me and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and him with me. He's asking today, dedicate your life to Christ. Hallelujah. Salvation. Rededication. Third of all, we are in church membership. That means you've already been saved, already accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Glory to God, been baptized, but you need a place to worship. You need a place where you can grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a good place to grow. This is a good church to lock into, get in ministry, and allow God to use you to serve his people. Glory to God. Anybody want to join this church, type it in the chat box, or anybody in the sanctuary who wants to join this church, or not be out at this time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Social media is cash app. 
glory to God. You can send your uh, sow your seeds through Cash App, and that's dollar sign New Bethel MB Church. Glory to God. Make sure you see the purple logo so that you know that you're sowing into the right New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. So get your seeds ready. And we'll pray over the seeds at this time. Allow God to move by His Spirit. Father, we thank you for you. Give us the power to get well. We honor you today for your word, Father. We give you glory and honor for you, love, a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver. Glory to God. We give cheerfully, Lord. We thank you and we honor you today, Lord, that all that can be collected on today and from here on out, Father, will be used to do ministry, to expand your kingdom. We thank you in advance for our second floor being finished and debt free. We thank you and we give you glory and honor today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless every seed that will be sown in this place. And we thank you and we honor you and we thank you. And we ask that you give back to the Psalm 30, 60, and even a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now you're in the hand of our ushers. Oh, 
Bible study, be blessed.